Okay, this is Umatic fix up. Uh, the first uh, big fix up of 2014 continued. Um, st I'm still slightly sick with a cold. And I did not spill a drink into this machine. Uh, so I'm getting somewhere. Um, what I'm doing today is, well, at least one of the things I'm doing today, is finishing up this dub connector hardware job. Um, I can't find easily enough for money I can not spend on um, the dub connectors that normally plug into the, um, let's see, where are we? These ports here. That is Umatic dub. Pins are female, holes are male. Go figure. Since I can't find the cable, I need to, uh, I'm, I'm going to wire it up as I had sort of half-assed before. Um, I, when I looked, when I took this apart, I was sort of horrified by my own lousy soldering job. So I decided to pull it all, uh, pull off all, all the hot glue and redo it. And uh, this time I think I've done much better just from the start. Um, really, this is just tacked on there. I need to make sure that especially this upper join here is good. Um, the white cable is luminance. The uh, red cable is chroma. Uh, and that's not S video. That is Umatic dub, probably 688 kilohertz on the chroma. Um, the center pin also needs to be connected. The center pin in this connector right there, um, that is the same as uh, what, as what goes to this wire here, which goes to the leftmost pin of that connector there, the CN909Y. Um, and that is a signal to, I believe what it does is it prioritizes the amplification so that it enables the dub signal to come out of the machine without passing through more amp stages. So it minimizes the number of amp stages and just sends out a raw signal or closer to raw signal. Uh, of course, it's not RF or anything. Um, I mean, it's not raw RF. It's, it's a, a baseband uh, luminance and... Uh, chroma at 688 kilohertz before it's been remodulated so it's not remodulating the color up to uh, 3.58 megahertz so it is has fewer stages and thus sharper picture quality less analog processing almost always means sharper picture so I'm using uh, this very bad Radio Shack wire um, this is this is the worst S video cable I've ever used that actually has good metal in it. Uh, if you run into this stuff, be very careful with it. Don't take it seriously. This is uh, Radio Shack cable that they don't make anymore. Uh, high performance S video cable comes on a roll. It used to. Uh, it is the most delicate cable. Uh, the only thing that's good in it is the metal. The uh, and the braiding is good. Obviously, you can see that it's actually uh, it's actually pretty well braided. It's good shielding, but if you look here, you can see that I hardly did anything to it, and it just went the the wire on the inside just came right through. So that's going to be all covered up with hot glue. I had to put extra um, heat shrink bits on it there, and there, and there. Um, I've also done a better job. I had to patch a tear in this in this outer jacket. This stuff is ridiculously thin uh, and easy to tear. Um, so I've added, this is this black stuff here is heat, heat shrink tubing that I've added um, and that goes all the way down to over the end of where it starts. And as you can see, even the uh, the outer jacket damages quite easily. Uh, but at least it's, it's rather thick so I'm not worried about it. Obviously this is the back panel of the machine. We're, uh, almost all the connectors go in and out so we have this uh, this loom here is literally the whole IO of the whole machine except for um, the uh, remote connectors here and the power uh, and by the way this is uh, serial number from our records 18820 Umatic SP BVU 950 and this is my number one machine this is the best deck that I've got in the best condition as you can see, it actually has a service record, which is amazing.
Look at that. Somebody actually cared for this thing. And, uh, and it shows. This uh, works quite well. Except for a power supply issue. And it's a little scary that someone has bothered to note all of the voltages here. So I suspect there's been a problem and there probably will be a problem with this power supply. Um, sometimes I have to turn it on and off a couple times to get a noise pattern to go away. And in, as part of resolving that, uh, I first have to get rid of all my own <clears throat> mods that may be causing worse noise. Like, say that. Um, I mean, I, that's why I'm fixing this up. This is going to be a good mod by the time I'm done with it. Let's make cameras that focus someday, okay? I mean, it's nice to sell cameras that you can buy, but um, do they work? So this, this uh, just, just for reference here, this board here with the uh, three transformers on it, that is um, XLR, and uh, we have the, I believe these are the XLR input transformers, because we have the switches here for the different levels, that's probably input, um, I can check that in a sec, um, anyone who knows XLR can tell very quickly by what the back, back of it looked like, um, and then uh, obviously this is the output section, so I believe this board primarily handles the XLR audio. Um, and my god, does it have a lot of stuff on it. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of amazing. And uh, this smaller board handles everything else. <laughs> um, obviously all the uh, electronics for these outputs are kind of everywhere else. What I'm going to do, I, I ran the cables like this because that was how they wanted to be run. I just trimmed... I trimmed the ends from what they were. I was working with what I had left. I didn't want to chop this off and start all over again uh, if I didn't have to. So these wires are actually going to have to be run in the other direction. They have to go along this way, and they have to they have to end up going through this notch here, which it's nice that they left that because then it can just run cable out of it. Um, so I'm also going to have to add a um, stranded. Uh, well, at least the end of it has to be stranded. Uh, stranded, you know, 22 gauge wire or something um, onto the, the center pin there. I'm probably just going to connect it to pin one of this again. And um, then I should be able to literally stuff the wires on the other end of this cable, which is, um, if I can get it in frame, that's, uh, that's these. So these are going to be going into the connector on on the uh, on the other machine. I've advanced to the next stage here. I still don't have any hot glue on it yet, but uh, that there is the connector that's been uh, all finished up and and tested uh, electrically. It is complete. Um, unfortunately, now there is a extra bodge wire. This um, black wire right here is now connecting the center pin because I messed up. I accidentally soldered this wire mistakenly onto there even though I had intended to put it there and when I went to remove it I accidentally pulled the pad off which is now sitting right there. <laughs> so I had to put a bodge wire to make sure that that center pin is still connected just in case one day there is a cable that actually plugs into that damn thing um, so it, it is still fu fully functional um, as a connector. And I tested the ends of uh, this guy here. Everything checks out. And so now I'm going to put the hot glue. Okay, and now the gluing is complete. Um, I've taken the board off its um, hinge there. And... Uh, just so that the hot glue doesn't run in places it shouldn't. Uh, that is the uh, connector that I've uh, worked on there. It is now almost completely covered, but not completely covered with hot glue. Perhaps I went a little bit overboard. Um, I try to do this so that there's no hard bends that are not further tacked down later on. So that way if it if this red wire gets pulled, it's going to pull on this rather than on this here. And same with this, I've, I've tacked that on there. 
and I've also checked it to see that this board which has to fold down on top can actually in fact close as you can see the um, metal is visible through the hole there which is quite good that was the main concern was the clearance between this white wire and the transformer there because I know there's going to be a field coming off that transformer video field maybe in the wire something like that um, I've also tried to put these cable stays or whatever those are called as far in there as I can um, this um, so that the black wire this is the control line for the dub um, and this is the actual video line they are going to be running out of this little cutaway right there. I did not do that myself. It was already like that. Interestingly, they've put a uh, wire keeper there. So I think this was actually, uh, that, that is where the cutaway goes over. So I think they've, uh, they've made some good provisions when they designed this thing. I need to do another continuity check just to make sure that this really shitty Radio Shack wire didn't melt through and the, con and the wires didn't touch each other from only the temperature of the hot glue. Yes, this is a worry. This is very shitty wire. Um, but like I said, the metal's good. This is the, uh, hopefully the conclusion of this project. I'm actually really happy with that. Actually looks like, almost like it's supposed to be there. Um, when it's screwed in place, it'll even have more room. So that's quite good. I even was able to add one extra th function of this secure fastening of this uh, cord here. So here I, I managed to put in a uh, this white plastic uh, holder. I managed to get that actually, uh, which that was originally empty. Uh, yeah, so that, that white holder there was originally empty. There was no wire in it and it was, you know, spaced in between this um, metal in the bottom there and on the outside of this door on this panel here where the uh, all the connectors for most of the machine are uh, this has a cutaway and that cutaway obviously was made to hold some kind of cable that comes out of there so not exactly sure what that was for perhaps it was for a line cord a regular uh, 120 volt line cord for in case you don't have the uh, EIA thing and uh, yeah, so anyway, I've uh, finished uh, attaching, reattaching the back um, circuit board here, which handles the XLR audio in and out. And uh, I managed to get the, there are two switches here that have to be reinstalled to get the machine to work. Um, well, or to be able to adjust the setting anyway. Um, this is a three position switch. And that is, uh, those are both obviously working now. Uh, they settle nicely and they're aligned correctly. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, so the, those switches actually run all the way back through to the backboard. You can see the, the plastic moving there. Um, and the switch itself is actually mounted on the back circuit board there. Uh, so we have the control line here and the uh, two video lines, red and white, going into this control line now joins it, goes into the white plastic sleeve there where it's actually anchored rather nicely. And this whole assembly can uh, fit back in there. I was thinking about putting more extra cord in there, but probably could fit a little bit more. Uh, I don't really want to have too much excess length of this video cable because it's going to end up having to get stuffed in the back there next to the power supply, which could have transformers putting out weird frequencies or something. Anyway, um, I think this is the best way to do it. I really need to get access. I can undo these, which is actually somewhat difficult, or I could, or I could undo the um, screw that's holding that in. Anyway, 
Probably more than you need to know about that. Final obligatory shot of the work completely done. Panels are flush. It even has this um, heat shrink that's um, acting as a guard right around the area of the red exits the middle. Some small damage on the uh, bottom here, but really that's just uh, a slight graze on the outside. There's a deep cut into it. So this this is the conclusion of the wiring for the, at least for the moment of the. Uh, so that would be the dub YC input line. This is an input line uh, into the machine 18820. That's BVU 950. This is my best deck. So I figured it should have a really good wiring job. Hope this was interesting.